Hello friends, welcome back. If you are a developer looking for a high-end pro machine without big initial investment, these virtual cloud machines could be a great alternative for you. In this article, we'll set up a Debian 10 Buster virtual machine on Google Cloud with all the goodies like LibreOffice, Firefox, Chrome, etc. And we are also going to set up some high-end developer tools like Node.js, Java, VS Code, Intelligence, so that you can code for web apps, Java, Kotlin, Python, Dot and Flutter, Scala, and other big data language. So let's get it started. All right, guys. So let's head out to cloud.google.com, go to the console. First thing, you have to make sure that billing is enabled on your machine. Even if it's not, I think Google offers up to the $400 credit for the first-time users. Now let's head out to the left-hand icon. Click on the Compute Engine VM instances. Now here, as you can see, I already have a virtual machine up and running, but I just want to show you how to create it from the scratch. So I'm going to create a brand new machine. All you have to do here, click on the Create Instance. It will take you to the page where you can create your new machine. Now, first thing you have to do, you have to give it a logical name, what you can remember. In my case, I'm going to create a Dev Buster machine. So I'm going to name it as Dev Buster for Dev. Next thing you have to do, you have to pick the region where you are located. In my case, I'm going to pick the Los Angeles. And as you can see, the zone changes accordingly. All right. Now, next item is you have to choose the machine type. In the ideal case, if you're looking for a simple machine with little bit of developer development, so four GB gigabyte, the machine N1 standard one is enough. If you're looking for a very high end machine, I think N1 standard four is good machine. But you know, for a pro developer, I think N1 standard two is the best machine one should choose. As you can see on the right hand side, the price changes accordingly. So I think I'm willing to spend $58 per month for a, um, for a eight gigabyte of Linux machine. Machine. So as you can see, if you if you choose the lower the machine, the lower the cost it is. So depending on your budget and need, please pick the app machine type appropriately. All right. Next step is you have to pick the machine type you want to host. So Google Cloud Platform by default it gives you a lot of different types of Linux machine and Windows machine. Uh, my personal favorite is Debian and Ubuntu. So just in case if you are planning to use a lot of Linux free apps. I think Debian Buster 10 is the most appropriate machine suitable for that purpose. But if you want to see uh, your machine, see yourself using a lot of free apps, plus sometimes paid apps, like uh, for example, IntelliJ um, Ultimate Edition. So I think Ubuntu is more app uh, appropriate for that purpose. So depending on your need, you, sh you should pick your Linux machine. Other than Linux machine, it also provides uh, out of the box Windows machine. So if you want to avoid hassle of setting up your development environment on Linux machine, you can just go for the Windows machine. And as you can see, it, it provides you a lot of different options for Windows Server 2008, 2012, and I believe 2016 and 19 different versions. So depending on the need, please pick the appropriate version. For the Windows Server, you don't need to watch this video any further. Just go and pick the Windows Server, create your virtual machine, and you can directly just access your Windows Server machine using um, any, uh, any VNC server or remote desktop machines. All right, next thing is you have to pick the appropriate uh, the size. So in my opinion, like, you know, typically 10 to 15 gigabytes of the size of machine is pretty good. And again, as you can see, it doesn't make a lot of difference uh, to the cost. But, you know, if you add like five more GB, I think it's going to add one more dollar. Next step is just allow the HTTP traffic. Click on the create. What it's going to do is going to start creating the new virtual machine for you. What I'm going to do, I'm going to click the create. It takes a few minutes, so I'm going to resume my recording once this is done. All right, guys. So as you can see, my development machine is ready. So all you need to do, click on this, select this machine, and click on the start. One thing I want to mention here: the moment you click on the start, Google Cloud will start billing you. So make sure whenever you are done, do not forget to stop it. In it will take a few seconds and the machine will be ready. So as long as it's ready, you will see this SSH link, SSH link will be on. So if I click, all right, so now, so now as you can see, the moment you see a terminal window, I want you to do free hyphen M. It will tell you the memory available in your machine. Second command I want to shoot is you name hyphen A. It will tell you the kind of the machine installed on this VM machine. Third command I want to see is LSB underscore release hyphen A. 
So it will tell you what Debian version you have on your machine. Now, next thing is I want you to I want you to do here is sudo that means super user do opt that means advanced package tool hyphen get and update. What this command is going to do actually is not going to update it. It will get the list of the packages installed on your machine. So the difference you have to understand the difference between update and upgrade what update does it will give you a list of the packages which needs to be update upgraded but and uh, as you can see you will see get hit get means that there is an advanced there's a an, um, newer version of the package available hit means this package is already at the current release you don't need to uh, do anything and if you see ign that means ignore ignore means that package may not be available so after the shooting this command i highly recommend you do that sudo opt get and this time you do the upgrade you can do both of this thing in single command but you know i highly recommend you know before you should uh, sudo opt get update it gives you a chance to um, to see what you are going to upgrade all right so all my packages installs are already upgraded all right guys now my Linux virtual machine is upgraded and we are ready to have a desktop UI. We have two different options at this point. A standard interface that is XFCE or Cinnamon desktop UI. In case if you are wondering which one you should pick, my personal opinion is that if you plan to use this desktop over a slower network where you have internet connectivity issues, please pick a standard interface. And if you want to have a more traditional look and feel desktop, go with the Cinnamon desktop. Now second decision you need to take how you want to access your Linux machine over the network. There are two different choices. Chrome Remote Desktop, which will let you use your any iPad or any mobile device standard browser so that you can access your machine. Or second, you can use that traditional VNC server. Or maybe both. So I'm going to show you both the options and let you pick and decide which one you want to have. All right, guys. So we are going to install the Chrome Remote Desktop and the standard interface desktop UI. So Again, I'm going to include all of these commands to the description of this video. Let's get it started. So first thing is, let's go to the SSH terminal window and start shooting this command. So first command is, I'm going to get the uh, Chrome remote desktop. As you can see, it doesn't recognize what wget command is. So let's first install the sudo opt install wget. All right. Okay, so now let's get the Chrome Remote Desktop. Perfect. So as you can see, this is installed now. Second thing is I'm going to update all the packages one more time. All right. Next thing is I want to do, I have to install the packages and dependencies required for the Chrome Remote Desktop. Okay, so I'm going to pause my recording and resume and this is done. All right. Now, as you can see, the Chrome Remote Desktop is done. Now, I have to follow up these commands to, to implement the desktop UI interface. So, first, you, I'm going to, you see, I'm going to get the standard Debian uh, standard interface desktop UI, which is desktop base. Second thing is, I am going to change the CRD, that means Chrome Remote Desktop, to use the, it by default. So, second command. I, what is going to do is going to set up the default session to start with the standard interface. All right. So next thing is we have to also because you remember we have to we are going to access this through a browser. So we have to work on the screen saver which is used by standard interface. Now this command sudo opt install uh, task interface desktop. This is going to get the small you know all the uh, good packages that means like LibreOffice or Firefox, etc. All right, I think at this point we should have everything. Yeah, now let's go. Um, I think now is uh, we are going to again see this is a virtual machine, 
So there is no standard display device. Your browser is your standard device. So what I'm going to do in my virtual machine, I'm going to disable the display. Now let's go install, install a Chrome browser. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to shoot two more commands. Alright guys. Okay, perfect. So at this time, I think we should have our CRD set up and we should also have our um, Chrome Remote Desktop and the Standard Interface Desktop UI set up on our Linux virtual machine. All right, guys. So all my packages are now updated and upgraded. Now we are going to set up the CRD on the client side. That means the browser machine I'm going to use to access my Linux virtual machine. So let's head out to remote desktop.com slash headless. Now here, this could be any browser. All you need here, any brow, any machine or any, uh, any iPad or any mobile device which you are going to use to access this. All you need to do is a Google account. So go authorize yourself pick up the Google account you want to use to access to this machine. And once you authorize this, it will give you a command. That means the, you need to copy this Debian Linux command here. Now take this command, go back to your Linux virtual machine. Now I'm going to paste this command to my SSH window. So what this is going to do, this is going to set up the same CRD, that means your Google authorization commands uh, on this Linux virtual machine so that you can, using your Google account, you can access this machine from any browser or any mobile devices. At this time, it's going to ask for a six digit password. I think it's a good idea to you know put a secure password here. That's it. All right, so at this point, I think everything is all set up. So your Google Linux virtual machine is done, your client is set up, your Google with your and secure by Google authorizations. Now from any device, now you go to the Chrome, uh, Chrome remote desktop. So it's going to take you to the link, say remote desktop slash access. And at this point, if everything is right, you will see your machine online. All you need to do here, click on the machine. And I think it already knows who you are. All you need to give it, give it a enter pin. This is the same six digit password you gave earlier. And once you hit okay, everything is, if everything is good, you will see your Linux virtual machine live inside the in, inside your web browser. So as you can see, you know, I can go to the file systems, browse through the my Linux virtual machine. And the best, best part is that I'm accessing this machine from a browser window. As you can see that, you know, most of the uh, like LibreOffice or internet like Google Chrome or Firefox is already installed. So most of the goodies are already installed in this in my app now. All right, so let me do one more checking. I'm going to open the Firefox and I want to make sure that I can, my Firefox can connect to the internet. Most probably there is no problem, but you know, I just want to check it out. So I'm going to try to access a couple of the website here. All right, it looks beautiful. All right, so now we are going to set up another method that is VNC server to access our Linux virtual machine. Now there are a couple of other options to set up VNC server, tight VNC server, VNC4 server, VNC server, or there is a X11 VNC server. It's up to you. All of those options will give you the same results. In my case, I'm going to install VNC4 server. Next thing is you have to install VNC password. It's not actually installed. You have to set up a password to access your VNC server. Now, this is the password you're going to use to access your VNC server. Now, next thing is uh, I'm going to start my VNC server once and it's important to start it once. Now, pay attention to this. The column two or column one, it tells you what port number your VNC server is listening at. So in this case, actually it's listening at 5902. If it is a column one, that means it's listening at port number 5901. Now I'm going to kill all the running instances. And the reason I want to kill all the VNC server instances so that I can modify the VNC server X startup file. Now what this file is, this file contains the information of the desktop UI it needs to be initiated. So inside the .vnc folder, there's a file called X startup. Now inside this X startup file, I'm going to comment out everything and I'm going to include only one single thing saying start X, XFCE4. What does that mean? That please use start a standard interface by default whenever you are starting the VNC server. All right, so now I'm going to start the VNC server again. And this time, if I go and try to access my VNC server, 
um, you might be assuming that everything will when, uh, will go right, but no. I want to show you quickly. Show you one more thing. Now here you will see some error. It's saying that VNC server is not able to access the VNC server. Now you have already set up the VNC server on your Linux virtual machine, but there is one thing you uh, we also need to do. So I'm going to start my VNC server here. But um, as I said, like you know, now you need to go to the Linux virtual machine, whatever machine you are using. So let's go to the console. Now there is some firewall settings you have to update to Linux virtual machine. That's what I'm trying to do here. So let's go to compute engine line and um, all the VM instances. All right. Okay, so here once you see choose your Linux virtual machine, there is a link you will see which says default. So under the network, you have to pick the default. Now here what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a Firebase rule. What this Firebase rule does, that it allows all the external network to access your VNC server, which is installed on the, your Linux virtual machine. So here, as you can see, I have set up a new VNC server here, VNC server Firebase rule here, which is saying, okay, that I need to allow all the target ads is like VNC hyphen server. And then I have to specify the source IP ranges. Now source IP ranges, again, I put the zero zero here. I, I, I do not recommend that you have to put the IP ranges you want uh, to allow to your Linux virtual service. But in this case, I'm just showing for the demo purpose. I just put this, um, put this zero zero here. Now save these changes. And now once these changes are saved, you need to go back and restart your machine again. And now if you go back and try to access your VNC server again, all right, 5901 connect. Hopefully you will, you see that that error is gone. So you just to uh, pick the password here and here you go. You can access your VNC server, uh, sorry, using VNC server, you can access your Linux virtual machine. So it's just another way like Chrome remote desktop is another way to, you know, um, to access your server. Now, next thing in this section, what we are going to do now, we have already implemented the standard interface. Now we are going to implement the Cinnamon desktop interface. Now, if you're wondering what the difference is, Cinnamon desktop interface is more traditional desktop UI. It's very similar to the standard interface but it's more traditional it's like more um, in other words i'll say good looking so these are the commands again same thing very similar to the standard interface just shoot this command one by one all it is doing first is installing the salmon desktop base and second thing is it is going to install all the goodies that means LibreOffice, chrome firefox etc and third thing is um uh, you know uh, once those goodies are installed you have to you know follow the same you know uh, shoot the same commands so let's go ahead out. I believe uh, I'm going to pause my recording because you know, once you're installing the packages, it takes some time. All right, my packages are done now. So next thing is um, you have to disable the, again, this is a virtual machine, so I don't need a, a screen server, or again, I don't need a display device. So you have to disable all this. Last two things, again, is optional, but I highly recommend that. Uh, this following commands, what it's going to do is going to install the Chrome browser on your, um, uh, on your Linux virtual machine. All right. Perfect. Now this is done. So now I think um, I, I let me just show you the, the demo. Like you know, it's the similar thing with standard interface, but I am going to just going to quickly show you what the Cinnamon Desktop UI looks like. So I remember I have already set up the Chrome Remote Desktop. So I'm just going to use the same Chrome Chrome Remote Desktop. I'm going to enter my pin, and then if everything goes all right, you will see your Cinnamon Desktop UI. Here you go. Look. Sorry, this looks like a standard interface. Sorry, let me go and um, make some changes. Oh, okay. See that, so I have to restart my machine. 
So first time, you know, Linux virtual machine by default, it was using the standard interface. Now what I did uh, without, you know, uh, restarting, I, I installed that. So that's why I didn't understand the changes. As you can see, now this is the new UI. So this is a cinnamon UI and you can see the difference. The difference is more traditional looking desktop UI, otherwise no other difference. So by default, both of these options, they come with the Java version. So you don't need to install the Java um, again. But again, in case if you're wondering, you have to install the new packages. These are the commands. If you follow this command, one by one again i'm going to share all of these commands to the you can find all of these commands link to this commands to the description of this video um, so that's how you install java but again java 11 is already there if you're interested to install the java 12 that's what you do now let's go install some other things like vs code and uh, other goodies so i'm going to do the sudo opt get update Again, so remember, these are the commands I am accessing here from the Linux virtual machine. So whenever you are trying to install a couple of those things, I highly recommend do not do it from there. Instead, you go to the your original um, Chrome virtual machine and uh, uh, open a SSH window, and then you do the all the sudo commands, please shoot it from that. You can also do it there as we know the root password, then you go and shoot those command inside the Linux virtual machine. But otherwise, you know, I prefer to do it from the SSH terminal window. So now we are going to install a curl command a curl utility here once you get the curl utility then you can grab the node.js version so here what we are doing we are trying to install the node.js so again this is the curl command and it goes to the node.js and i believe as um, you know at, at the time of recording this video the latest version is 12.10 and if you want a 10 version up, up to you you know you just need to change the setup 12.x to the version you want and uh, all you need to do shoot this command is what is going to do is going to get the latest node.js version and is going to install on your machine all right so sudo up get installed hyphen v node.js All right, so I believe Node.js is already installed on my machine. At this point, if I go and to, to my terminal window, if I do Node-V, see, the Node.js is already installed. NPM comes in built with Node.js. You don't need a separate installation, but I'm just going to show you, you know, Node-NPM-V, hyphen it will tell you the latest NPM version. Now, if you're wondering if you want to install the Angular CLI, so this is the command. If you go to the angular.io, you will see the instruction how to set up Angular on your machine. It's very, very simple. It uh, sits on top of the Node.js. So all you need to do, npm install hyphen g, that means globally you install npm um, Angular CLI. So this is the command. If you shoot this command, you will have Angular um, running on your machine. So I don't need that. So let's go install the PyCharm. So I'm now going to install two more packages, two more very popular software, PyCharm for Python coding and IntelliJ for Scala, Kotlin, and Java. So this is the command I'm going to um, shoot to install the PyCharm. As you can see, there's some problem. It's saying sudo snap is not found. Okay, so I think I need to go inst install the uh, snap utility, just like the curl utility. All right, so I think the exact name of the utility is snapd. So you have to shoot the command sudo opt install snapd. Earlier I was just using the sudo opt install snap, that's why it was not working. So now a snap utility is installed on my machine. So next thing is all you need to do sudo snap install and PyCharm classic. Now again, remember you can choose the version you want. I'm going to install the PyCharm community version. All right. Awesome. So uh, while I'm waiting, I think, you know, I'm going to install the second version that is IntelliJ ID, IDE. Beautiful. So it looks like I have both the PyCharm and IntelliJ uh, IDE installed on my Linux virtual machine at this time. So let's go back to our documentation. Now it's time to install the Visual Studio code. Again, just to, you don't need to, you know, type all of these things. I'm going to include all of these commands to uh, link to this video description, and you should be able to, you know, access all of these commands. All right. So now,
sudo apt install code i believe this command is going to install the visual studio code now on my machine now awesome so everything looks beautiful now so i think the last step is how to install the android studio um again this is the link you can just download the android downloading and you know installing android android studio is very very easy now let's go back to our virtual machine menu i want to just quickly check that i have visual studio code and intellij id see both of these softwares are available on my machine now PyCharm Community Edition. All right. And Visual Studio Code. Perfect. This looks pretty good. Okay, so let's go head out to the Firefox. So as you can see, we have most of the goodies now, VS Code, Angular, and uh, um, Visual Studio Code, and uh, Android IntelliJ ID, Java, so that I can code in this Kotlin as a lot. Last thing I want to show you, Android Studio. So go to the Android Studio, um, developer.androidstudio.com. All you need to do is download the Android Studio package here. And uh, I believe it's going to uh, ask for the, you know, I will, it will ask you to agree to this, their terms and condition, and then you can just go and download their uh, tar file. Now you can save this file to anywhere. I think any any download directory that should be fine. All right. So just want to while we are waiting, I want to show you how the IntelliJ IDE looks like. Awesome. So my Android Studio is tar.zip file is already, you know, uh, downloaded here. So what I want to do here. Okay, my IntelliJ ID looks pretty good. So in case if you're wondering how to, you know, code for Flutter and Dart, go to your IntelliJ. All you need to do is I have the separate tutorials on Flutter and Dart, and I'm going to include the link to my those videos as well. Um, but you know, on you, you can use Visual Studio Code or IntelliJ to code on uh, Flutter and Dart. Now, in Android Studio, all you need to do is extract all the zip files inside your download directory. Now, once you have that, you need to go to the Android Studio bin directory, and there's a file you will see. It's called studio.sh. Sorry, I'm just taking a detour. I'm just going to, you know, uh, to check if the ID is working on file or not. Okay, so let's go to the Android Studio bin and you'll see a file called studio.sh. This is a Unix shell script file. All you need to do here, you need to, you know, open this file in the terminal window and this file, it can, you know, um, start, the, uh, start the Android Studio installation on your machine. If you're installing something please try to you know shoot those command from the ssh terminal window instead so let me try uh, accessing this studio.sh file sorry there's a typo so sudo studio.sh okay now let's go to your virtual machine so i think this is the correct command dot print slash studio dot sh and as soon as you shoot this command is going to install the android studio perfect okay so it's going to take you to the virtual installer and then everything is like you know you have to choose your android studio setup and uh, i believe you should be able to install android studio one thing i want to mention here um that's a you know if you are accessing or if you're coding on android studio on a linux virtual machine by default you will you are going to have trouble accessing the emulators so you won't be able to see an android emulator now if you must have an android emulator what i recommend that you can use some other third party emulators like um, uh, like jenny motion or something like that otherwise you know uh, you can still you can you have access to all the all the Android Studio SDK and platform tools. You just will not have access to the uh, actual emulator, which shows you the live app while you are coding. All right, so let's go install this Android Studio packages here.
All right. So I think, you know, I'm going to pause my recording and resume as this is done.